In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be showing you my Dark Knight build. This is a level 150 intelligence build that uses both melee and ranged attacks to take out enemies from any distance. So let's jump into the weapons first for this build. The first weapon we use in our right hand is Health and Steeple. This is a great sword that does physical and magic damage and scales predominantly with intelligence and a little bit of strength. And it has incredible magic damage, which is good. The weapon skill for it, Ruinous Ghost Flame, adds a small amount of magic damage for 30 seconds and also gives it the ability to build up Frostbite. When we pair this with the Dark Moon Greatsword, which also has this ability, it does magic damage and it builds up Frostbite. You're able to set the Frostbite status effect rather easily with these two weapons if you're attacking with them in rapid succession. One of the things I really like about Ruinous Ghost Flame as well is that the buff is very quick to pull off. Unlike the Dark Moon Greatsword, which has kind of a longer animation, you can pull off Runa's Ghost Flame very easily in a fight. You should try and keep this up 100% of the time if you can. And this is one of the reasons we keep it in our right hand in order to, you know, buff faster while we're in combat so you don't have to, like, swap to your offhand and then buff and buff back. And also the Dark Moon Greatsword's buff lasts twice as long, so you're going to be able to buff twice with this before you run out of Dark Moon Greatsword. And you probably won't rebuff with Dark Moon Greatsword's buff while you're in combat because it'll be really difficult to get that down, particularly if you're fighting aggressive bosses. However, it's not necessary to buff yourself with Moonlight Greatsword in order to get the Frost effect, so as long as you keep up Runa's Ghost Flame, you'll have the Frostbite build up on both weapons. I like to do a lot of jump attacks with these two weapons. You can use the Claw Talisman for this build for specific sections of the game. I find that the Claw Talisman is one that I swap in and out depending on what I'm facing, because a lot of enemies you can jump attack in one shot and wipe out a lot of enemies that way, and sometimes if you're facing a difficult enemy that's hard to jump attack against, maybe you'll swap that out for something else. Additionally, we use the Staff of Loss in order to cast Night Shard and Night Comet. This staff boosts both of those sorceries by 30%, making it outperform things like the Carrion Regal Scepter. So it's going to do the most damage using this staff if you're at, you know, the same amount of intelligence we're at with any other build. So this gives you a good amount of range damage as well as the melee damage that you have with the two great swords. Additionally, other spells you can use with this build are like Terra Magico, which will increase your magic damage by 35% for 30 seconds if you stay inside of it. This is really good if you know you're going to range things down or if you know you're going to be fighting in a specific spot. It's hard to use because it has a long animation. So this is something that you'll probably prep before you pull an enemy that's going to be tough rather than do like mid boss fight. When it comes to armor for this set, I'm using the Knight's Cavalry set. I've altered the helm there and there's two reasons for that. One, it gives really, really good protection. It's not probably the best protection in the game, but it's substantial protection, which is fantastic. And also it looks fucking awesome. So. If you're playing a Dark Knight build, it seems like you should look like a Dark Knight, and this armor kind of has that theme, along with the Knight spells, it's kind of the idea I had. When it comes to talismans for this build, we have the Claw Talisman in our Flex Spot, the Magic Scorpion Charm, the Great Jars Arsenal, and the Primal Glenstone Blade. As I mentioned, the Claw Talisman is one I like to sub out periodically depending on what's happening. Sometimes I'll sub this out for the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman in order to give myself a lot more physical damage protection. You already have pretty good physical protection, then you add this, you have even more. Or I'll sub it for the Mass Graven Talisman to increase my sorcery damage if I know I'm going to go through a stretch where I really need to rely on like Night Comet to get me through or Night Shard. This is good. Or maybe it's a boss fight where it's just easier at range. So that's another one you can sub into that spot. Magic Scorpion Charm increases your damage with magic abilities or spells by 10% or even regular attacks, which is great for this build because we have two great swords that deal both physical and magic damage and then your spells are magic damage, so it's going to benefit those as well. If you don't have this one, the Ritual Sword Talisman is not a bad option. The Great Jars Arsenal is there to give us more equip load. We're wearing very heavy armor. We're carrying two great swords and a staff. We need equip load in order to be able to mid-roll, so we have this one here. And lastly, we have the Primal Glenstone Blade. This is to reduce the cost of Night Shard and Night Comet by 25%. Night Comet goes from 24 to 18, which is fantastic, because you're going to want to use this spell a lot. And at 24 FP, it's quite a lot, considering we don't have a ton of mine because we're not a pure caster build. So this makes it a little bit easier. Keep in mind, though, that you do reduce your max health by 15% when using this. And this is one of the reasons we have so much vigor with this build, is in order to take that hit and still be able to take damage and live. However, you might want to consider swapping this one out for the Green Turtle Talisman during, like, boss fights where you need a little bit more health. And also, one of the things that I find is spamming Night Comet just drains your stamina like crazy. So does doing dual-wield attacks with great swords. You really can't have enough stamina recovery in these fights. You actually have a good amount of stamina with this build because we have a lot of endurance, but you need to recover it quickly in order so you can spam Night Comet, and you can also do, you know, attacks over and over with your dual great swords. So this might not be a bad option to swap out in boss fights, but it's really, really good when you're making your way around the landscape because picking off enemies for cheaper, saving and conserving your FP, 
allowing you to have more HP flasks is going to be more beneficial there where you don't really have to worry about your stamina management as much. So this is an extremely versatile build. You'll find probably that when you're facing bosses and tough enemies that you're changing up your playstyle on the fly. Maybe you run in with dual great swords and you're going for jump attacks right off the bat. And then the enemy backs away and starts hanging out at range and starts doing range attacks and you find yourself firing Night Comet. And then it gets back into melee range and you swap back to your dual great swords and start doing L1 attacks. It kind of does, it's the way this build kind of plays. It just kind of plays back and forth, back and forth. And you're not going to just play only melee or only range during most fights. Most fights you're going to change back and forth. It's kind of a dynamic playstyle, and it can be one kind of hard to master, specifically if you don't know enemies that well. So it takes a little bit how to learn how to play this build, but it's absolutely a blast to play once you get it down. Additionally, having the flexibility of doing jump attacks or regular attacks or L2s or damage at range with Night Comet or Night Shard gives you a lot of things that you can do, and you can handle a lot of different situations. You can add other spells to this build, too. You have, like, 70 intelligence with it, so it's going to hit really hard. Like, you could add Loretta's Great Bow in here for some even more range. Although it's not going to perform as good as if you're using the Carrion Scepter for, you know, for that spell because you're using the Staff of Loss. It'll still hit fairly hard, and you can add other spells like that to this build if you want. When it comes to stats for this build, I have 50 Vigor, 30 Mind, 24 Endurance, 20 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 70 Intelligence, 14 Faith, and 9 Arcane. 50 Vigor is there because you are playing a melee ranged hybrid character, so you are going to be in melee range and you want to be able to take hits. When you do jump attacks with weapons, a lot of times you trade damage, so you want to be able to survive that uh, and be able to heal. 30 Mind is there because you go through a lot of FP casting these spells, and you also use some buffing your weapons occasionally, so you want to have a decent sized FP pool. You don't really need much more than this because you can just allocate more FP flasks if you need them, but this is a pretty good spot to be in. Endurance is exactly enough to be able to dual wield both of these weapons as well as the staff and the armor and still be able to medium roll. So if you use different armor that's either lighter or heavier, you may need more points here. 20 strength is there to meet the requirements of the weapons. I believe the highest requirement is 19 strength. I just put one extra point into it since I had one to just kind of round it off. We don't need dexterity for this build. That's why it's at 12. And 70 intelligence is there to increase the damage with our weapons as well as our spell damage. The reason we don't really crank strength that much is because it doesn't benefit the spells even though it benefits the weapons and we want to benefit both spells and weapons with our stats even if the diminishing returns on the weapon past 50 or whatever start to you know decline a little bit it's still going to boost spell damage which is great so you get the most bang for your buck out of intelligence 15 faith and 9 arcane are just there because those are what my class is if you're playing a different class that doesn't have these you probably have a better stat spread than this you can go up to 80 Intelligence if you want. I will probably wouldn't go up too much higher than that. Just a couple things to remember when playing this build, too. Remember to rebuff with Runus Ghost Flame every 30 seconds while you're in a battle. It's not that hard to do once you get it down. The animation is rather short, so you can pull this off pretty easily in order to help you get that Frostbite build up, because Frostbite's going to deal, you know, like 10% of the HP of the enemy and also reduce its absorptions, making you deal more damage against it. I don't advise trying to rebuff with the Moonlight Greatsword while playing like in a boss fight. It's just too hard to swap to that left hand weapon, get like a one to two second animation off, then swap back to both weapons and keep fighting. But one thing that you can do is buff with the Moonlight Greatsword before you go into combat for a tough fight or a boss. And even if you have your staff out in your right hand and you're ranging enemies down or a boss down at range, your Moonlight Sword is still buffed and it lasts about a minute. So. You know, it's it's a good amount of time, and then if you find yourself having to swap to your other greatsword, you're already buffed there, and you can just buff real quick with Runus uh, Ghost Flame and continue attacking, or just get right into it if you don't have time to buff. The reasons that we use Health and Steeple here and the Dark Moon Greatsword instead of maybe something like Iron Greatsword with a Cold Infusion or one of them being that weapon is because the magic damage is lower on average, so you're actually getting much higher magic damage with both of these weapons. And both of these weapons have B scaling. Every great sword that you can put with an infusion of cold in the game has C scaling and intelligence. Some of them have good scaling and strength, which is great, but the scaling and intelligence is much, much worse. So if you put points in intelligence, your damage isn't going to be as good with melee attacks. Your spells will still be strong, but your melee will suffer. And then if you put more points in strength instead of intelligence to get better melee attack or about the same melee attack you get with this setup, then you're losing out on your spell damage which sucks. So that's the reason we use these two swords. However, if you want to put like an Iron Greatsword with a Cold Infusion to get an Ash of War that you prefer over, you know, Brunus Ghost Flame or something like that, you absolutely can do that. Just keep in mind that the regular attacks aren't going to be as effective as they would be with this setup. However, you might be better with another Ash of War, so that might work better for you.
And lastly, if you're using the Flask of Wondrous Physique with this build for a boss or tough enemy, I like putting the one that gives you stamina regeneration in. As I mentioned, you chew through stamina with this build if you're spamming Knight Comet, or if you're doing jump attacks or rolling and then hitting L1 or using L1, you just go through stamina. So recovering it faster is going to let you keep attacking or attack and then dodge out of the way without getting hit. And the other one you want to put in there is the Magic Shroud and Crack Tier to further increase your magic damage for 3 minutes. Most boss fights last about 3 minutes or so or less in my experience if you're doing them properly. Not all of them, but a good amount. And so you should be able to complete the fight before this wears off, which is good. And also, you know, your weapons and spells both do magic damage. So you're going to benefit not only your spells, but also your melee. So that's a really good combination there. Stay tuned for more level 150 endgame build guides for Elden Ring. I think the next build I'm going to do is sort of like an elementalist build that uses sorceries and incantations to do every damage type possible in the game so you have something for every situation. But let me know what you guys want to see in the comments below, and I will try and get to those as soon as I can.